Okay. Well, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, I, the first thing on the agenda would be the uh, minutes of the last meeting. Did you get a chance to take a look at them? Or? I'm trying to see them. So I'm just going to make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from the last meeting. Second. Uh, motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. Meeting minutes uh, so have been accepted. Okay, now I guess we go on to basically the renovation update. I mean, um, I think our big part of our conversation should be about how we're going to get this open, which I think is doable by the twenty second. That's our that's our big task. We have we will have one more meeting before then. Yes, we'll have our main meeting before. Then. Yeah, and as you may know, tomorrow. I'm meeting with the Northeast Fire and Safety to make sure that the exit signs uh, are gonna be in the proper places. And if they have to be updated, they'll be updated. Um, and also a meeting with the plumber at eight o'clock tomorrow morning to uh, find out uh, if we need a new toilet or if he can add about 900 pound flush power to that thing. So, so you don't have to stand there and hold the the handle to flush it. Yeah. So I think it's going to wind up being a new one, but maybe Dennis will pay for it. Yeah. Um, and it's not super expensive. You, yeah. you can get a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. It's a, well, it depends if you do a commercial toilet versus a, but I don't think yeah. you really need a super commercial one. There. It's not like it's being flushed every, you know, 15 not, minutes like a public building is. Yeah. 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 Just that comfort height, 20, 20 some odd inches rather than one that's sitting on the floor. Yeah. My niece, I went, spent the 10 days with my niece and she didn't have the comfort height type toilet. And I, I thought I was in grammar school. Yep. Right. You know, I was just at a house yesterday like that. It was like going back to school. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if we had to pay for it, I don't think it would be. I, we've got, yeah, we've got, we've got money, you know, we've got some money. So um, the, the, the thing, I'm, Steve, I'm glad you made it. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, he's muted. You muted. muted. Sorry, last meeting ran long. My apologies. That, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I, you and I should touch base after the meeting to find a time that we can meet to talk about the military stuff because we're really moving forward. We're opening on. We're doing the grand opening on the twenty second. Um, I found some good mannequins that I think will work. They have a thirty inch waist on them, so I think I don't think those older uniforms are much smaller than that. I don't know. So. I'd like to talk to you about that at some time if we could get if we could get together. Uh, World War II fighting age men were a lot of times in in, in the twenties, like a 20, 28 inch waist. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. I know people were smaller in general back then, so I didn't know if. Well, they were, were all smaller. kids. They were all teenagers. Yeah. You yeah know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I think we have to measure the uniforms to see what we want to get because I haven't ordered any of that yet. Um, and how many? The ones I found were two hundred and something dollars. And they look really nice, but um, but we got to make sure the stuff we have is going to fit all of it. At least some of it will. You know, maybe we can only display the ones that will fit for now, and then we find ones that will fit afterward. You know, I and what, what are we going to display? I think that we need your input on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I haven't been able to get over there. It's I had no idea how much of a the time commitment was for the wedding and everything. So. Yeah. Um, so if you could, you know, or even if I could just send you the, I don't know, we'll figure, you and I will work on the, the timing and figuring that out about what, what we're going to display so we can, I can start working on labeling the stuff that's going to be there. Because that's a, that's a, that is not done. The sports and recreation is not done and the, um, the military and civil defense is not done. The rest of it is almost pretty much completed. Everything has a lot of descriptions. It's good enough. You know, I feel comfortable enough that it's opening. Right now, Pam is working on a, um, like Bellingham by the century, like a sh just a bulleted list of the highlights of each century. How's that going, Pam? I have just started looking through that book, the uh, George Partridge book. Yeah, okay. Just yeah, to kind just, of- Just something when someone walks in the door, they have some, short history that they can see what the things are. Marjorie actually finished a draft for me of the history of the schools because I just wanted a list of all of the buildings that served as schools in the school section. And it's not as easy as it sounds, which, which because there's 
conflicting information in depending on which book you're reading. So she did the best she could. I'm going to take a look at that and get uh, you know get that list up in the school area uh, with pictures of some of the older buildings that don't exist anymore, like the center school and um, the South School, the original South School. Weren't a lot of the schools just in houses? They were. The original ones were. Marjorie's, so coming, in. Marjorie's coming in right now. Are you talking? So you're talking about the formal, actual formal schools, not yeah. the one. Not, well, there's not going to be pictures of those one-room schoolhouses anyway, I don't think. I mean, so just getting, I, I think the, one, the the bigger things that people might remember, like the center school and um, yeah. the, the south school. Um, and then, so just like I did on the other things, I put one or two pictures in with the descriptions of things. So it's, so there's some um, idea of that. So Marjorie, we just described discussing the school thing that you were working on for me that you got to me. So I'll take a look. I haven't had a chance to review it yet, but like I said, I was them, there was lots of conflicting information based on what, what you were looking at. You're muted. You're muted, Marjorie. <laughs> My camera wasn't working before either. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I was able to sort quite a bit out, but there's a lot that we don't know that you'll see when you look at the at yeah. the form that I sent. And I think a lot of things that we're unsure we'll just put to the best of our knowledge or to something, you know, to have a caveat on it. Like when yeah. I, the Clara Macy desk, I haven't been able to really find anything that says it was her desk. So I put to the best of our knowledge, or we have been told. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we know when that school opened and closed. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how many students I took a guess yeah, for I, that. And I'm not sure that that's, it's, uh, that's that important. I think it's more just say, so these were the buildings that served is what kind of what I'm looking right. at pictures of a couple of them. We're pretty clear about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that's, that really I took from the, um, from the script, the manuscript for the anniversary book. I just took them straight from there. So as far as the front display case, right now what we have in there is the Boston Post Kane, the Alice Burr dress. That dress had pantaloons with it too. When I took it off the really, yeah, when I took it off the hanger, there's little pantaloons underneath it. It's really cute. Um, so there was that. That um, the the church model, the amethysts, and so I'm trying to find enough to fill that up. And then I'm I think I'm going to do all of the books that we talked about. And Steve, you still have those papers, right? The Thompson papers. I do. Okay. So if we want to display those, or do we want to scan them and display copies of them? What do you think? Um, perhaps a little of both. Maybe the uh, permanent display would be copies, but then maybe every once in a while bring out the real deal. I know myself as a history buff, I like to see, see the real deal, but okay. I don't want to get too much sunlight on them. Right. So, so we're going to have two bookcases abutting each other. The other one was behind it and there is no sunlight on that one behind. So I was thinking of putting the books and the documents in the back bookcase because they would be more protected from, there's not a whole lot of light that comes in the front door, but I think the back one is a lot better things for those things that are really. I had somebody give me the business about having the, the letter from the soldier from the French and Indian War. They're like, that shouldn't be with you guys. That should be in a museum. I was like, pardon me? It is a museum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, that back display case, I've, you know, we, we, there's a few books. There's a few of this. I got to forget the other things. They're just old documents. And I think we do those on the top shelf of that display case so you can look down and tell people what they're looking at have mm -hmm. documents on that one. So that's still gonna be pulled together. Um, but we're, we're, I, 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 we're not in bad shape. I think, and what my opinion is we just, and we did get a lot of stuff out of the museum last week. The DPW came over and moved the bookcases, I'm not bookcases, file cabinets downstairs. They moved a whole bunch of stuff downstairs for us. Um, and we got things really back a lot. It's a lot, it's an open space now. These things are accessible. So mm -hmm. that's gonna make a big difference. Um, the table that we have there, that big long conference table, it's really taking up too much space. So we're gonna, in the basement, I, we found this desk that I'm calling tiger wood. I don't know what it is, but it's it's a beautiful wood desk that will make a small, good small conference table for that area. And we're gonna swap out the conference room table at the library because ours is falling apart with the one we had there. So we're gonna move some stuff around. And I think I'll keep the two tables that we have there that are pedestal tables that Rick brought in. I think we keep one of those in the back. We can use that for an expanded desk space if we need more space when we have a meeting with it, if there's six or seven people. You can fit comfortably four to five people around the desk, the desk table. You probably, you know, we have six or seven. So if 
I think I don't think it'd be a problem. It will be way less, it will take up way less space. The table won't block the emergency exit, which the current table is doing. So it makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are um, really important considerations. Yeah. I feel very strongly yeah. about emergency exits. And we also have the fire department that should speak up for saying well, that's not okay. Me, I'm sure they're gonna have, they're gonna wanna come and see it before we um, open. Mm -hmm. You said the 22nd, did, do, do you mean the 22nd of May? Yeah, so it's gonna open, we talked to Dennis, we're gonna do the ribbon cutting at noon before the parade. So we're just okay. gonna do a short, because everyone, he said everyone at 1230 will leave to go to march in the parade. So we're gonna do it, because he said if we do it after the parade, no one's gonna be around because they're all gonna be at the VFW having cocktails. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if we, I figure I, we open the doors at 11, we do the ribbon cutting at noon and I'll stay there until two o'clock if people, you know, while the parade's going on, if people wanna wander in and out um, and just do it that quick, you know, that we open in three hours that day. And then we do need to talk about long-term what we're gonna do for hours. Um, I'm gonna talk to Rick, um, uh -huh. our new volunteer, um, Lauren, to see if she uh -huh. can commit to a steady time every week. Because if she could, we could mm -hmm. have it just staffed by us. She's a senior tax volunteer that's been helping us out organize some things. We could just have it staffed by her, give her, she's great at doing organizing things. So I could give her assignments to do while she's there. And she could just be the presence. And, you know, people are coming to ask questions. She doesn't know the answer to them. She writes them down. She gets them to us and we, and we get back to the person. Um, you need a body there to be when the doors are open. Right, exactly. It's just, right. Yeah. So I think we have to talk about what that's going to be. I mean, I don't know that we have to open on Sundays till the fall or winter, you know what I mean? I don't think people are gonna be coming in July to see what's at the museum on Saturday, Sunday afternoon. So I think mm -hmm. if we do some, and, you know, some evenings or even early Saturday mornings, like, a, you know, nine to 11 on Saturday morning or something, um, we need to have time so it's accessible to people. So that's something we really have to discuss. Some, some museums offer by appointment and right. I, how would we handle that? Well, we could just make a form on the website where people sign up for, they contact us for an appointment. And then one of us would need to- And then to we have to write, right. You know, appoint, open by appointment on an agreed schedule. So they send, I'd like to come over this day. We see if one of us can make it. And then, you know, then we mm -hmm. say yes or no to the person. Yeah. Um, yeah that's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, if there's a way to communicate that, I mean, I, I get most of the phone calls. Yeah. Um, and, and occasionally I'd be able to do it. You know, it's, my schedule's, you know, tough right now, but there's, you know, there's times I can work out. I would love for us to be open some of the evenings when there are meetings at town hall, like, so that we can tell those select board or the FinCom, come and check out, you know, get to those people to come and see what's going on there before they go to their meetings. And even advertise to the people that attend those meetings. We're open, you know, if the meeting starts at seven, be open from five to seven those days. So we're there before those people show up for meetings to try to get more people. And then with, by appointment, we should definitely do things for school groups or Boy Scouts mm -hmm. or those kind of things. Encourage those people to make appointments for a time. For a well, time. we would need to communicate with the schools then um and i don't think that i think that's next school year i don't think we have to worry about that you know yeah. it's it's, mm -hmm. it's april i mean i think we can talk about that over the summer um, but that's something all yeah. the members you know figure out what we can right. do as opposed to one person carrying right. yeah i think if we have it but i think if, they, if one person just handles the request saying okay we've got someone that wants to come thursday at four who can be there mm -hmm. and then right. we get back to them you know maybe we ask for like two weeks advance notice for an appointment you know uh, or even just, you know, for group or for group tours, you know, mm -hmm. and then you can also ask people to send us three, you know, send us three days or times that work for you and we'll let you know which one someone yeah, can do. That, that, like that. that sounds that yeah. sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, we might want to talk about more people getting keys if more of us are going to be there individually. So I'd um, rather see us change the lock on that front door. They, well, they're talking about changing those, the lock. those yeah. keys. If you can find anybody that has them. Yeah, they're like twenty five dollars a piece. Yeah. yeah, well, we're talking about getting a push bar on the front anyway, so maybe the whole lock mechanism will change. But that'll be something long term. That I think all I think all of us should have a key to the building. Tech, you know, in real in reality, there's no reason why everybody shouldn't have a key. What can, what can we do to make the front entrance have a railing? Because right now I I so they are. Can't, get there yeah well the back you can use the back entrance i mean the handicap entrance is a really the front entrance what they're doing is and i don't know if it's going to happen before with the grand opening or not it might not i don't know what, i can check with jesse the dpw is going to take out 
from where the con where the asphalt begins down to the crumbling concrete and make that a ramp. And then you then you hit the, the granite steps where there is a ramp. But I don't know when that's going to happen. I can check okay. with Jesse on that. Um, yeah. But that is in the because right now what is there is not is not code. It's not safe. It's not code. They know that. Well, at, at, at the last meeting we had with the building inspector and Jesse, yeah. they were not talking about putting a ramp. They were talking about putting steps there, those two steps back, if you remember. Really? I, thought that, they were doing a, I thought they were doing it just a flat, either concrete or asphalt. Yeah, I think um, the building inspector was talking about that we that they needed the steps there. I don't know the two well, steps. Well, they need steps, then they need a railing. If they have steps, right. they yeah. absolutely need a railing. So I'll check yeah. in with Jesse on what the status is of, because I know he was, they were looking at that. That's the DPWIs were going to do that. Whether it's going to help, ha happen before the grand opening or not, I'm not sure. You know? As long as you have the ramp right. for general public access right. that's necessary, it's just for commission members, I, we're, you know, you kind of need it. All it would take is a railing. Yeah. So. It well, just, the concrete itself is really crumbly on those stairs. Well, like it needs it. It mm. really needs replacing the. It's, but if but if they're going to replace that, stuff um, yeah. anyway, yeah. put a damn railing there. Mm. <laughs> it's just yeah. Sorry. Um, so I will I will email Jesse to see what the status because we did talk to him about that and he's got someone coming over to look at the the door because technically that door should have a push bar. It's a knob to turn it. At a minimum, it should be yeah. a. Um, a handle that you just pull down, not a knob, to mm -hmm. for accessibility. So that those things have to be looked at too. Which, like I said, if they're going to happen before we open it up. But the handicap ramp is that is our accessible door, so mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. can open to the public, obviously, with that door. Um, yeah, that, and also I got to get a hold of Ronnie, find out what his he was supposed to meet with Franklin Glass about replacing the top to that. Uh, Display case. Display yeah. case, because mm -hmm. they were coming to look at something in the town hall, and he was going to bring them over for that. Yeah. So, uh, not by talking about what we were just talking about, it, it just yeah. uh, lit the light bulb in my head to check with Ronnie to find out what what kind of money they're looking at to replace that, and and Ronnie would do it yeah. and put a new felt strip mm -hmm. and whatnot on that. So that, that's. The other one isn't bad. The glass on the other display case isn't as damaged as the one on the the, the better, pretty, really nice wood wood display case. So do, do we more. know if Victory has come and fixed has attached um, the air conditioning? They, it has not been fixed yet, but they came and made a parts list. So they they, they probably had that was like a week and a half ago. So they probably had yeah. To I'm, I'm gonna I'm going to text uh, Don Fleck, the guy that I met. Yeah that set this all up and he's the one that suggested uh, having their electrician do it and Dennis said, go ahead. Yeah. So I want to find out, I want to get a timeline because uh, you know, a week and a half, you don't need that much time to put a materialist together, you I, know? I did tell the guy our, we were opening in, in on May 22nd, we wanted it done before then. So that was made pretty clear to him when I met him. So. It's okay to remind them. Yes, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like putting a tack on the chair, you know? Yeah. For them to sit up. <laughs> That's the way I look. Well, I'm not going to. And, when, they, the and when, they're sick, when they're sick of sitting on the tack, they'll do something. <clears throat> One so. thing I would like to discuss is, and I don't think, I mean, maybe we ought to do a separate event. So, I put in my report that three, the 300th anniversary time capsule has been sitting in the library's history room. It was supposed oh, no. to be closed on April, like, 15th, 2020. And of course, that didn't happen. Um, and it's been sitting there ever since. And technically, it really is, I mean, I think it belongs at the museum more than it belongs at the library. I was going to keep it here because I was on the 300th anniversary committee. Um, but I think we need to talk about is it, and I, I can talk to Jennifer Altamonte, who was the chair of the um, 300th anniversary commission about how we're going to do this. But um, I don't know, maybe we wait, maybe we wait till Bellingham days in August to close the to close the um, time capsule. I don't, I don't want to try to do too many things in one day, but it is something that kind of should be done. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure there's some masks in there. Yeah, oh, there are. There's <laughs> masks. Actually, the one thing that I put in there that was really kind of cool that I saved the time was the New York Times from May of that day when there were 100,000 deaths and we thought it was a big deal. I put, I saved the newspaper and that, that's in the time capsule. Um, yeah. So, 
because uh, they have the a page, the hundred, the hundred, the names of the hundred thousand people. Which is, is there? Is there a cutoff? Was it cut off in twenty twenty or? Not really. No, in... we didn't really. We didn't. I mean, yeah. This. I. I think I did put some masks. I definitely put some pandemic stuff in there. Definitely did. Um, you yeah, could put see, a COVID testing kit in there too. Oh, I, I have an extra one of those. I can throw one of those in. <laughs> you know, yeah. kind of because it is. You know, if if we're talking, they're open. Even if they have twenty five years, will be twenty from 2019 is 2044. I mean, hopefully people won't be talking about COVID in 2024. They'll talk about it like we talk about the 1918 pandemic, that, that thing that happened a long time ago that, mm -hmm. you know, so-and-so's grandmother might have died, but no one that they really, you know. So yeah, there's stuff, there's stuff in there. Is the 300th anniversary committee even, it has, has it been dissolved? It's, it, there's, there, there's no, I don't, I technically, I don't know. I know there's still, funding, there's still money that was raised that hasn't been transferred to the general fund yet. Um, okay. Not much, but there's money still in there that that was raised from the events that I don't know what, I have more than once I've told them that, yep, that, yep, that those accounts are still low. I mean, they know the money's there and we're not doing, I don't think we're doing anything with it. So maybe that maybe we could do something with the money in the, talk to them, coordinate an event with them and do something at the um, Bellingham days to close the, the it feels like it's actually very appropriate for the historical commission to take over that role right. as opposed to an ad hoc committee right. that I, yeah, it, I, there isn't an anniversary anymore. Right. But I think we ought to invite the people that did the work on the committee to be part of the part of the event yes. or whatever it is. You know, they buried a time capsule under the new steps. Well, so the time yeah. capsule that I bought, you know, the time capsule that I bought is actually, it looks like a treasure chest. So it's not meant to be oh. buried. Because you know, oh. you bury them and then they can never find them. That's the part of it. Right. So I'm thinking if we do this, we I literally I was just gonna zip tie it shut. Because that way you don't have to worry about a combination lock, you don't have to worry. And just like maybe we just put it like up, you know, on top of one of the things at the museum with a thing to be opened in whatever year it gets open, then it's pretty prominent. You know where it is. It's pretty. It's a and pretty put little... a label. So right. we... Yeah. But it's... I know there was one that wasn't found, right? It was buried under a flagpole somewhere. And then when they dug it up, they could like they couldn't find where it went. So um, mm -hmm. who says you have to bury a time capsule? Right. <laughs> Yep, I know of other ones that have been lost yeah. and nobody's ever found yeah. them. So I think if we could do, let's just put that off to Bellingham Days. We can do something as there and then store it at the museum after that fact. Okay. I just wanted you to- want to make a motion? I don't think we need a motion. <laughs> I think we just want to agree that we're not doing this as part of the grand opening. Fine. No. So I guess for me, what I'll do is I'm just going to be in touch with each one of you as I need help to get this off the ground and get it going. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone has time, um, you know, I, I've been trying to send out each week when I'm gonna be there. Um, and if you have time to make, make it, that'd be great. Um, I might end up taking a couple vacation days in early May just to make sure we're on track just to get it done. Um, so. Um, You're gonna, uh, Lauren's gonna be there on Thursday, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. She's coming at 11.30 on Thursday. 11.30, yeah, I can yeah. probably be there then. Okay, because we gotta figure out what, and so Steve, I'll probably send you an email with some details, Steve, that you can kind of go through on your own time and get back to me on. Does that, does that seem to work or you want to have a phone conversation? Uh, whatever works for you, whatever is convenient. It probably, it, I, I, I probably getting there at the same time as you is, is, is really the problem, getting yeah. the time. I mean, if, you, if a phone call or, or um, you know, over email and stuff, I'm, I have lots of fill-in time that I can do stuff like that. But so right for me, writing it down is probably because I'll have to write down all the things I want anyway. So writing it down will probably just as easy and send an email, then you can do it on your at your leisure when you get there. And if you want to call me and give me the answers, that's fine too. After you read the email, but I'll probably write it all up because it'll just be easier for me to clarify in my head the, the issues that I need resolved. I'm happy to do like the schools if you've got other things that you right. think I can be helpful with. Right. Okay. Oh, maybe, you know, maybe some kind of this, I see a lot, is, is military history of Bellingham written in any one given spot? I don't think it is, you know, so that's a, that's a hard thing to, um, yeah, that's a harder thing to do. There's I mean, like, a little bit of, of that, um, most, actually, strangely, in the church stuff, um, 
not real military history. That's where Deborah Sampson, there's some mention yeah. of, I believe, and yeah, we, got, we, we gotta it. do something with her. I don't have her, I don't have her in there anywhere yet. So we gotta do something with Deborah Sampson somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, even though I'm even though I'm kind of iffy on the whole Deborah Sampson thing. But, yeah. <laughs> but it is kind of a um a folk, I don't know if it, well, it's not really a folk tale, but it's a embellished. Bellingham's role was embellished, I think, but that's another. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, there is some connection. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just yeah. not not real strong, but she yeah. got I'm the men's pro. clothes from Bellingham, <laughs> is what I understand. Well, she th there was a tavern here where they were mustering um, a light infantry regiment, and she was tall, and um, that's she ended up joining. See what I think was actually happening is um, she would show up and collect the bounty as Robert Shirtcliffe. She would sign up and then, and, you know, take whatever the, the, you know, 20 shillings or whatever it was um, and then disappear. You know, she'd become a woman again and then she was gone. Right. And I think that the, uh, the light infantry company in Bellingham is like, Oh no, you stay right here. You know, um, I understand from Muxbridge that she actually signed up. In she signed speech. up in a lot of places. Yeah, yeah. Robert Robert, oh. Robert Shirtcliffe shows up in a lot of muster rolls. Oh. You know, so oh uh, my, so uh, gold digger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't I can't speak yeah. to her motivations. Yeah. You know, I, I but um, the the thing that that is pretty well known is that she once she did actually serve. She she served in combat. She was wounded a couple of times. Um, and people liked her enough that um, after she was married, she had a farm in Sharon, mm -hmm. and Paul Revere intervened to get her a pension. Mm -hmm. oh. So, I mean, the, her contemporaries believed that she served honorably, so I, I wouldn't contest, you know, Okay, Paul so Revere. Margie, I'm going to charge, charge you with writing a one-pager about, De about uh, Deborah Sampson. How's that uh, sound? I could, I could yeah. help only because I'm friends with Janet Parnes, who does... Yeah historical reenactments specifically with her and I could I could get in touch with her on that. The other question for the grand opening is who do we want to invite to be there and to cut the ribbon? Should we invite like the family met like someone from Marsha Crooks's family, someone from Ernie Taft's family, someone from you know the McCracken family that they're still around? And have a group of people that were former chairs of the commission. That all sounds reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. Might actually some other uh, local civic organizations too. Maybe uh, someone from the VFW or something. Whoever's the grand poobah over there now. And well, we uh, yeah, we can invite a whole bunch of people. I mean, we can definitely invite a bunch of people who had you know. If we, I think if we have three people at a ribbon with a pair of scissors and you know if so, I'll try to find out who all the if if there are family. I mean, I know Marsha Crooks's family that probably would come. Um, um, what's it? Ernie Taft's sister is still, you know, in town. So there are people that probably would. Does that seem like a reasonable thing for me to pursue to invite those people to do the ribbon? Oh, Barbara, Barbara Ellsworth. Okay, right. Um, has she grew up here, and that's the Ellsworth, the uh, not the Ellsworth, the Eldridge House. Right. That um, I was thinking of people that were directly affiliated with the commission, though. The people that serve, like as chairs of the commission, the family members of the chairs of. I mean, not that we can't invite the, you know, the. We can invite whoever we want to invite personally. Send out a personal invitation to anyone we want to personally invite. Um, you well, know, you got, you got town, you got town uh, uh, officials and state officials. Right, absolutely. Yeah, we have to invite all. We definitely have to invite all of those people. That's yeah. That's a, um, be a I, big, I, yeah, a big crowd then if they show yeah. up. Yeah. Well, what Dennis said is they used the museum was always opened before the parade, and they did so. There, it's not a new thing for the town officials to know the museum is, was open. So he thought that's why that's why we took his advice on opening at noon that day because it's something that they've done before. So he said we do a noon ribbon cutting, a little ceremony by twelve thirty. They're all in their cars driving to the middle school to be able to start marching at one. So. And then the people that are downtown waiting for the parade to come, uh, you know, we can try to get them to wander into the museum. What's the traffic like? Because they always end up blocking the roads. Yeah. So is well, that a problem then, getting well, to the, the middle school? Um, you'd have, you'd probably have to go down. Yeah, you'll 
You probably, we'll probably go down 140 to get there. Or go down if they block the middle, you go down. Yeah, I don't think they block the middle off till right before. If they do, you go down High Street and go down, you know, Ida Maple too. <laughs> yeah, they'll get they'll get them through. Yeah. It's well, that's the fun. other thing. Yeah, you can well, just say. You know, if it's them, if it's them, they'll get them through, and it's going to be the official. It's going to be the officials that are going to be doing that. No, they I'm usually gonna... shut the road down within minutes. Uh, yeah, I think they only the shut the center probably. down like at quarter of one or something. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's right before the because they 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 let they don't let people go up North Main. I know up south up South Main. That's cut off pretty early, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think they've cut off one forty. But that's. <clears throat> That's for them to work with the police. They'll, they'll figure out. In worst case, you go down High Street, go to Maple, and come back up Blackstone Street. Speaking of the parade, um, yeah. did we ever turn up a uh, an eight foot pole? Oh, I didn't get. You know what? I didn't do that yet, but I will put that on my list. I'll have. Thank you for reminding me. I will get one. Just like a like a um, a dowel, like a. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I actually, I, I, I wasn't sure how, how to pay for it or whatever, but yeah. I saw some at Home Depot the other day yeah. when I was there. I'll have, I'll have Jim go buy one of the library's Home Depot account and I'll build a commission. Okay. Mm. That's good. Now, um, let's get to get back on track so we don't yeah. run over. So Bernadette's going to leave. Uh, I have a six. I'm going to be done by update. six. So, yeah. Budget update. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So we got, um, we still got a decent chunk of money. We've got thirty-four hundred dollars in the thirty-four eight fifty-six in the town funds, and thirty-six hundred twenty-five ninety-three in the gift funds. So we still have, you know, if we have to buy five mannequins that are three hundred dollars a piece, we still have or four hundred dollars a piece. We still have enough money to buy buy those mannequins that we need. Um, and I'm just buying little things that we need as we go as as I go along as I see there's a need for them. Um, so we'll have some supplies. Now we might end up having to pay the plumber. We might end up having to pay for the emergency lights. So we'll see what what those things are. But we've I think we've got enough money to get through um, to the end of the year. So I think we're in good shape there. Yeah. All right. Now you want to make a mention, uh, number three was on the Crenville Commons finalization of okay. summer yeah. point. So, I, what, so there was a, a little point <clears throat> that was made before that highlighted all the collections in the museum. And I think that's what the Crenville Commons is going to be. It won't be in a booklet form, but it will just be like the story of, 10 things that are in the museum. You know what I mean? The renovation is complete and do something about the mile. Well, we did, we kind of did the mile marker not that long ago though. So maybe we skipped that. Something about the Boston Post Kane, you know, just pick those big things and write a short story about, about what all those things are. And that's the Grimfield comments. So, and come and visit the museum and see these wonderful things. <laughs> when, think does the when does the edition come out? Um, it's, we're, we're only doing two a year right now. So it would be July. So we can't really even do anything about the grand opening of the museum. Well, we could, do come out. we could put two pictures of the grand opening in. All right. After the fact, do the grand opening pictures in the in the new issue. Right. OK. Yeah. I mean, well, we can do, I can do a, um, a constant contact newsletter to tell our contacts about the grand opening. For we getting it in the bulletin, we need to yep. get it in by April yep. 15th. I'm, I'm, I'm writing that press release as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we can just tell people what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're not going to have, you know, I won't have the name of the guests or anything, but just, you know, what 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 we did and what that we're having a ribbon cutting on the day of the video for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm working on that as we speak. So, and uh, <clears throat> while, while we got Steve here, uh, I've got a book I, I got from the museum to read. Um, I don't know. It's about the town hall. Hmm. And it, there's a thing here, if anybody knows anything about this, is the uh, a stone on High Street in 1744 from the Baptist Church that stood off High Street 50 feet back from the road. Um, I don't know if you can make that out at all but i can't know. exactly see it but yeah i don't know if that if that stone is still there if anybody knows anything about that Marjorie, you don't know it's, about it it's, i've uh, driven i've driven on <clears throat> high street many times and 50 feet back you might not be able to see it just because there's shrubs that have grown up I, yeah I, i'm just you know. wondering if it was still there i was going to go up and look for it but there was a Baptist church back there. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I've heard from the Baptist church people that that's yeah. where the first 
um, meetings were oh, things. Town on High Hall. Street. Yeah, we're, we're there. I definitely, I've definitely heard that too more than once. So. Yeah. Is, is, is there any idea about where along High Street it is? I would say it was going to be if it's near the old house that was there on High Street would be to the left of the fields. Because I remember when I started on the fire department, there was an old house on the same old. side as the fields. Yep, there was an old house right there, <coughs> and I I don't know if it was called the church or if it was called a some type of a, a meeting. But it was a real old building, an old white building. It was right where the fields are on the right side. So if you were driving into the fields on High Street, it was like to the left, okay. to the left side of the fields. So it certainly isn't going to be farther down where the Charles is because that's all swamp. So they would come yeah. to the highest place unless it's the farm. Is on. There was an active dairy farm on the opposite side of the river. Um, I'm guessing it wouldn't be over there. I, I bet it's somewhere around those fields. Yep, it says, um, I don't know if it says here. Well, it was put in place, and it was, the boulder was put in place there in 1912 by Reverend Wakeham and town officials. So, and so it's, it's, in, it's in that book. So, that, I mean, is that an old picture of it, or is that a picture they took when they published the book? I guess that's, that's a good question. It just, it looks like an old picture, but I don't, it could have been done yeah. in the 60s for all I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it says right on it, site of the First Baptist Meeting House is what's, what's written right on it. I didn't even know there was yeah. there. They were there. I, I knew there was something there, but I didn't know there was a marker for it. Yeah. No, it's I kind didn't of, either. I'm going to go looking for it if we get any more nice days. <laughs> But all right, I, I kind of got sidetracked from everything on that, but I thought. Well, the other thing that we're the the, um, the carpenter is doing or don't do is the, so the the doors to the basement right or well, the the doorway that's open to the basement right now. Obviously, we want to block that because it's utility. It's kind of utility. We don't want people going down there because so they're gonna put in like a double door <laughs> that opens like this, like a so they're two thin panels so the doors open out into the museum just to block off that area from, you know, I could, I was thinking of doing a curtain, but like some kid would go tumble, tumbling down the stairs. So we really probably do need a door there. Is there any access from the basement to yes. get out otherwise, there's, other yes. than coming up the stairs? Yeah, there's, so the, yes, on the back, on the right hand side of the room in the basement, there's an exit that comes up near the emergency exit stairs. Okay. It's kind of, through a utility room and but it's accessible. It's absolutely again it's it's a fire issue. Right. But we're not that with the basement, I don't think we're ever gonna be able to open the basement to the public. It's just not accessible. It's just not accessible. It's more it, I think long term we think of that as our storage facility. Yeah, you need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of basically what's going on right now at the museum and what's coming up. Um so we did speak about the grand opening plans but on the, on the in may our next meeting in may we can go delve deeper into that so i i would move on to uh if anybody has any new business they'd like to bring up um at this i wasn't point. sure i wasn't sure if i was didn't get it on the <clears throat> agenda but um i was asked to get some information about the community preservation act I don't know if anybody looked in the bulletin this month, but there was a whole chart of monies from um, deed, deed, the fees when people transfer real estate. And um, it showed how much money each town had from those fees, but they go directly to all the towns that have a Community Preservation Act. If you don't, if you have a Community Preservation Act in your town, those fees come to your town. If you don't have a Community Preservation Act, all those fees go somewhere else. So we're losing out over $250,000 pretty much every year because we don't have a Community Preservation Act. So that's just the finances. 
for it, we're losing out. That article was done by the, the Norfolk County whoever, right? That was yeah, it was Norfolk County. It yeah. was I mean, but I, I you know, so they were saying here's what each town right. is eligible for. Right. And if you don't claim it by having the act, it gets spread out to the other, it gets distributed to the other towns. So we're forfeiting two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, just, probably a year. It is a match, though. I mean, it do, it that does increase fees on citizens uh, in Bellingham. So Got I just, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can keep foregoing yeah. $250,000 every year as long as we know that that's what we're doing. I, well, I think the big thing is, is we'd have to have a really a, a plan on what our, what, what would the money be used for. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really going to be a whole probably a separate committee. I assume you probably need a there is. committee that has to do yeah. So I don't think we're ready for that step yet. It's just, it's just a we need a more involved group of people. To right. I spoke to a couple of different um, people in different towns, um, both Franklin and Upton. Upton has had it for at least 10 years. Franklin just passed the legislation this past year. They still haven't it takes a while before the money kicks in and you get it, but um, they tried about 10 years ago and failed because they do it, did it too quickly mm -hmm. and weren't methodical right. about getting buy-in from all the different stakeholders, which is Parks, Historical Commission, uh, Conservation Commission. I forget if there was another one, but you can, you can exempt low income people from participating or even um, having it attack, attached to their real estate fees. So that's again, part of the deal. There's a whole bunch of like four different things that you can exempt a citizens from. So, you know, it's quite a bit. I, I assembled some, but I didn't get all of it together. I thought that article in the bulletin was actually very eye-opening which I, I hadn't gotten that information yet. So it sounds like we need, it, it needs some serious um, research and we also need, that you said it had to be brought up at a town meeting. Selectmen, so that, selectmen have to approve the right, effort. Right. And then I believe it has to get voted in town meeting. There's there's a whole process. Yeah, the only way I see that working is if we come up with the a plan of what we think the funds would be good for and used for so you can present something that makes sense not just we want this money you know right. we want this money to do this this and that and these are things we haven't been able to do because we don't have it this is what it would enable us to do there's somebody at the state level that comes out to towns and lays out here are the benefits here are the challenges here's the process and they're actually that's their job is to work with towns that are expressing some interest and they'll they'll come right out to us and meet with interested people. I was gonna say, we would need somebody with deep deep knowledge and expertise in this and how to present it yep. to the public if you're gonna accept, if they're gonna accept it at all. Right, the, absolutely, and the state works with us. Yeah, sorry, Pam. I, I just think it would be a really hard sell. Hmm. Yep, probably. <laughs> But if we don't even consider it, we Hi. certainly won't. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot, like a lot of things, sometimes you have to present it numerous times. It has to go and fail before it might succeed. You know, and that's 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 Possibly. just a step. that's a step you have to know that you want to bother taking, that you're willing to fail, um, or have it really well organized and which you're super well organized and have full support and mm -hmm. wait for them to go forward with it. If yeah, you, you have to get the different commissions together and have them say yes. And if they don't, it you might as well not bother. Mm. So there's a lot of legwork before it even comes. There is. The there's a whole committee that is a campaign committee that isn't the people that actually administer it, but they're the people that actually do the educating the community about mm. the benefits and the challenges. So they're separate committees. If it passes, that campaign committee immediately dissolves, and they have to then appoint committee members to administer the funds. Mm -hmm. 
but you gotta have the you gotta have the buy-in with the selectmen as well, or else it's not gonna work. I, I think thinking about this is great. I think it's a back burner item for us right now. It's not, you know, I think it's a um I, I'm fine with that. I I've gotten some information, I've got more education, and I will try to put that together just so we know what the options are. Oh, good. Any uh, any other new business? Um, I just uh, I handled you know the phone calls and emails and whatnot to a certain degree, and I got a contact from Steve Rassicott, um, who's interested in donating arrowheads and wooden boards that have writing on them. Um, I've sent him a, uh, a donation form um, just so that we could you know, hopefully get some photographs of the stuff. He did send me photographs of the, of the boards, um, which, um, you know, I can, I suppose I can send them uh, out to the group. Um, but um, they don't, they don't have any specific Bellingham significance, in my opinion. I mean, I'm open to other people's interpretation. Um, the arrowheads, maybe, I mean, they, they are a small footprint. Um, he said he can document where, they, where he dug them up. Um, and uh, and then there was also some kind of a um, a bone thing he thought might have been possibly Native American artifact. Um, so um, those are those are potentially interesting, but I'd want to see yeah. the form. If there's no, I mean, if he can document where they are, where he found them, and it's in town, that's a that's a good sell. If they're not, we need to keep focused. Is mm -hmm. Well, mindset. he did say he, he dug him up in town and he, the, the bone thing, again, he doesn't know what it is. And I, I don't know that it's not just an animal that died there, right. you know, um, <laughs> so I, I, I'm not a paleontologist or, or, or anything. So I really don't. Maybe it'll be obvious if we see a photograph that I can share with someone who might know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But um, uh, I guess that that thing came out of his garden when he when he when he started digging out a garden. So where does he, where does he live? You know, he, I, I didn't put it in the contact log, um, but he's, it's South Maple Street, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. He, he did rest, say, he yeah. said it was Maple. Yeah, yeah self, he lives on South Maple Street. Uh, the Rascott family, just so everybody knows, are the ones that developed the first stage of Maple Book huh. from the South, Ma South Maples in 1985. They dug up that whole first section. And then the Blackstone Street side was at a later date you, with the different designs. But mm -hmm. the first first pot was all the Rassica family that put that in in 1985. And he lives in one of the houses on South Maple Street, right across from the entrance to Maple Brook. Mm -hmm. There's duplexes there. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I don't know how I know all that. Probably because I... <laughs> Probably because I I did all the I did a lot of electrical inspections in there and that was a family that was running the show so <laughs> I'm as old as dirt so things come to my mind as I go. Well, do you remember when the Native Americans were there? Did they did they leave behind anything? Maybe you recognize it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know they they told me they were leaving a lot of stuff with Marcia Crooks. So I, I don't know. It's, a, it's probably on her land, buried over there, but. I know Tonto left to go with the Lone Ranger, but that's another story. <laughs> Is there anything happening with Marsha Crook's property? Um, it's in, they are in the process of, they have a lawyer and they're looking to turn it over to um, a natural, they don't want to give it to the town because the town's got no money and to keep it up. They want to, they want to do it to something like the Autobahn Society. The Metacomet Trust. Metacomet. Metacomet. Met, yeah, that's what I was yeah, going to say. Trust the people that have, or, or I should say, organizations that have money to keep it up as open space. That'd be good. For trails yeah. and stuff like that. But they, it's not going to be sold, she said, for development. Yeah, so it's supposed to be in the Metacomet Trust. And then in the, um, there's a section of six acres, I think. They're going to have a family that's going to take over the house and they're going to run a section of it as a farm. Nice. Oh. Okay. Because there's property that goes with the crook uh, across from the house. 
across mm -hmm. uh, Lake Street, that that's all part of that whole same. Um, <coughs> yep. On the cross street, the lower end of the yep. yep, that yep. little field at the um, near near Lake Street on Cross yep. Street. That's all part of theirs. Yeah. But yeah, they were not, they were not, they have no interest in selling it for development. Yay. That's great to hear. Yeah, I was wondering because I'm by there all the time and I, I keep thinking to myself, okay, what's going to happen with this now? I know. Yep. I, we, I we've said the same. If they could get it set up something like Daniel's Farmstead in Blackstone, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That is a cool place. There's some nice programs they run over there. They also had some real um, controversy about the Daniel's yeah. farm. Yeah. And it was also Metacomet Land Trust. So yeah. I, they yeah. may well, at the least. The one in Medway is owned by the town, right? Medway owns that, the, um, whatever that. The, the Thayer, Thayer, Thayer House. house. Yeah. yeah, Medway owns that. But Medway has a Community Preservation Act. Yeah. So they well, they've also, I think they also, they rent it out for weddings. They rent it out for everything. So they're, they yeah. they're yeah, 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 yeah. It's a beautiful place. It's a great location. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. So, um, so does anybody have anything else they'd like to bring up? I do not. Nope. Nope. All right. So. If we've got nothing, our next meeting, it looks like it's going to be May 9th. 5 p.m. Monday, May 9th. May 9th. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. And we'll it might be good to talk about maybe having that meeting in person since it's a week and a half before we open. Does anyone object to that? I do not object. No. no. <laughs> I just have to get to my other writing group at 6.30. So. Isn't that right across? Isn't it at the town hall? Oh, you have to hold your way home for that one. Yeah. It depends. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm I'm still, because of health issues, staying yeah. pretty yeah. Uh, well, I could, when could, I can. I could bring the um, library's owl thing. We could do a hybrid that if people want to be in person, we do it in person. People that want to be at home, we could be at home. Yeah. I, I mean, that's what the writing group is doing. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it's more work. And that's oh. mostly oh. I'm avoiding in person. Yeah. yeah. Out in indoor yeah. programs. Mm. So, all right. So we'll uh, we'll take them. We'll entertain a motion and to adjourn. If anybody wants to make the motion, I will raise a motion to adjourn. I will second that. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Not the eyes have it. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. We'll keep you posted on what's going on. Yeah, I'll just Good be night. in touch with people as I need your help. Good night. Good night. I'll see you Thursday, Bernadette. Yeah.